friends! Today is going to be a recently read ARCs video. Welcome to day five of Advent where we will be talking about books that I read recently. ARCs that I've read recently, technically. We have six books to talk today, so let's get to it. The first of which is A Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sanku Mandana. I gave that a four out of five stars. I did struggle with this one uh, as a where to place it genre-wise, but it does involve a witch in a society where witches are not really supposed to be public and because witches when they're together their magic kind of goes a little wild they try to stay away from one another. I think her coven of witches meet quarterly and they have no contact outside of their meetings and she is asked by someone who sees her on YouTube performing magic tricks to come to a house in the country where they are trying to raise three young witches together. Um, which goes against everything she's ever been taught about magic and witches in general. Uh, but she chooses to go and to try to help these young girls in a way that she was never really helped growing up. Um, all witches, their parents die pretty soon after they are born. Uh, you don't have to have witch parents to be a witch. It's a whole other thing. So she moves to this house to help raise these three girls. There's a lot of other things going on. It's a bit of a romance. It's a bit of a literary fiction. It's a bit of a mystery. It's a bit of a cozy vibe. Like, there's a lot of things going on. It's got uh, urban fantasy, if you will. Like, there's a lot going on in this book, uh, but I did really enjoy it. It has um, some found family aspects to it. Again, the romance, the magic is interesting. I liked the world that was built. And I think the story overall was just interesting to read. We then have Her Buried Lives by Caitlin L. Duncan. I gave this a four out of five stars. Um, this story follows a girl who her and her mother are going back to her mother's hometown to kind of pack up the old family home and to sell. And she believes that her mother's family is all dead, but once she gets there, it learns that her mother's sister is actually alive and we get parts of their story as children and also her story, um, the, the daughter's story in modern day and kind of how those worlds collide. There's a lot of mystery aspects to it and the daughter sees, we'll call them visions, though it's not like it's, it's not a supernatural thing, it's a mental health thing. Um, where she tends to see things in a very um, unnatural point of view. And for me, like from the first chapter, I was really worried about an unreliable narrator issue because I really cannot stand an unreliable unreli narrator. Unless, I mean, there are certain people who are the exception to the rule, but for the most part, it's not my jam. But I think Caitlin did a fantastic job of, you know, the beginning you're seeing there in a car and the main character starts describing like this major traffic accident or this major event that's happening, um, you know, like where her mom's going to wreck the car and she's going to die. And there's, you know, she's like describing all the blood and everything that she sees and just it's a very visceral thing. And like she sees these kind of things all the time. And the way that Caitlin wrote the book and wrote these scenes, you can definitely tell when she's in that scene and when she's not. So you can kind of tell by the way it's written what's in her head and what's actually happening. So I think it was really well done in a way that it doesn't make things as they're happening feel unreliable. I did enjoy learning about the family and uncovering some of their secrets. I do think if you read a lot of adult mystery, you may put pieces together a little quicker than what some other people might uh, but overall was really fun and enjoyed it. We then have The Luminaries by my queen Susan Dennard. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. So The Luminaries follows Winnie Wednesday who is part of this society of people who essentially fight nightmares. They are a group of people who every family has something that they're specifically good at um, and Winnie's family has basically been excommunicated from the luminaries overall because her father ended up being um, a member of a, 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 I want to say ruling, but that's not the word, a 
a society that they're against. I can't think of the word right now. It's, it is poof, gone. Um, but it, it's a different society that they fight against. They're mortal enemies. Uh, he was like a, of, um, uh, a mole into their society. And because her and her mother and her brother didn't figure it out soon enough, um, they were kind of excommunicated, except they're still allowed to live there and exist. They're just not allowed to like make money or do anything to help anybody, which is weird, but okay. Societies are weird sometimes. Our main character, Winnie, decides that she wants to be a luminary. She wants to be a hunter. Um, and in order to do that, she has to pass the hunter trials. And so the book is following her trying to get up to speed with the other kids who are taking the hunter trials because she's so far behind on training from them. And also, um, meeting new friends and uh, old friends and maybe even new monsters. So if you've tried to read Susan Denner before, what I say is that the world building and the magic system of this book are similar to the Witchlands in that it can be intricate and it can be very immersive and multi-layered, but the story has the readability of the Something Strange and Deadly series. So it has, in my opinion, kind of like the best of both worlds. If you felt like The Witchlands was too involved and maybe too too much to keep track of, I think this series may work for you if you enjoy Susan or if you enjoyed like her character work or her world building. Um, because it is like in more manageable chunks. I loved the monsters and the way that she wrote them on page and kind of like how they came alive. And like you see, they are typical monsters that like we would see in our, this is going to sound weird. They are typical monsters that we see in our real world, you know, like the things we hear about all the time, like werewolves and, you know, some of these things I've read, like in Rick Riordan's work, some of it I've read in Mercedes Lackey's work. So like there are things that exist that we've probably read about before, but they are well written and they feel complete and they feel like they are coming alive on the page and it is, is creepy. Um, perfect for this spooky season. There were a lot of mysteries to solve, such as what is the Whisperer, which is like this new monster that no one knows what it is. What actually happened with Winnie's dad and how was he able to, you know, trick them the way that he was? And also, who is the werewolf? I'm pretty sure we all know who exactly who the werewolf is, but who is the werewolf? Um, this was definitely one of my favorite of Seuss's books. I had a fantastic time reading it and I cannot wait for the second book. I will, but I but I don't want to. We then had The Wicked Remain by Laura Pohl. I DNF'd this at 10%. I'm not doing a full DNF video this time because I didn't have a bunch in a row. Um, we're just going to talk about the DNFs while we're here. Um, I DNF'd this at 10%. Uh, it was not my kind of YA. It was too much and not enough at the same time, if you know what I mean. Like it just went straight in and like started throwing all of these random facts at you and I have no clue what was happening. I did not like the characters and I like you were with each each character for a chapter and then it just moved on to the next thing and I'm like I have no clue what is happening who are these people and I just was not having a good time. I then read Accomplished by Amanda Quain and I gave that 3.25 out of 5 stars. This is a reimagining of Pride and Prejudice from Georgiana Darcy's point of view in modern day. Um, it was just okay. There was a lot of teenage drama and social anxiety with some romance and friendships kind of thrown in, uh, but it was a lot of teenage drama, like a lot of teenage drama. It was a good overall YA book about discovering how to love yourself and finding your place in the world, um, but I don't feel like there was anything special about it or that like, you know, sang to me in sweeping ways to like, you know, make me proclaim it was the best book ever. It was just okay. And if I were in the age bracket, I probably would have liked it better. But as a 35 year old woman, wasn't my favorite. And the last book that we're going to talk about today is Pretty Dead Queens by Alexa Dunn. I DNF'd this at 8%. Uh, maybe a little more than 8%, but around the 8% mark. So my main issues with this book was the main character. I really struggled with I felt like she was kind of monologuing at the beginning, um, describing about like the way the houses were built, how they were decorated, the interior design, and then the 
um, the architecture, like the generational architecture, like this 70s bungalow or whatever words she was using. Um, and it sounded like she was this person who's like studied architecture for years because I mean, me as a 17 year old, like that's a brown house. That's a white house. Like, I don't fucking know. Um, but she very early on in the book, like lists her hobbies and interests and nowhere in that is like HGTV, a hobby or an interest. So it just felt really weirdly forced for her to have like this internal monologue of this information that I don't expect a regular 17 year old to understand. I don't know. It didn't, didn't work for me. I also felt like having her fall in with the popular kids that were like the main point of, okay. So the point of a book is that you put your characters where you need to put them and that's fine, but you have to do it in a way that it doesn't feel forced. And this felt forced to me. So I kind of felt like it was too heavy handed in a way that sh kind of showed me what was going to happen later on in the book. So by the end of chapter two, I knew like with 95% certainty who the killer was and why they did the killing and also some other things about them. Um, and so my decision was to, as I always say, look at some spoiler reviews and read the last chapter to see if um, where I thought the book was going to go was correct. And if I thought it was worth spending my time to read it, um, I was correct based off of two chapters of knowledge. And while there, I know that from the synopsis that there is a secondary, um, copycat murder and like a whole other mystery going on with that, um, which I didn't get any of cause I read like the first two chapters and the last two chapters. Um, I just knew from what I had read that it wasn't really going to be the book for me. And because Alexa is a fellow author tuber, I did the same thing that I always do um, with author tubers. Rather than read a book that I know I'm not going to rate well, I chose to DNF so that my rating doesn't have to go in so that my rating doesn't affect their Goodreads review uh, score. So um, that was the decision that I made. I did really enjoy the Ivies though, so I will pick up more from Alexa in the future. I just feel like this wasn't really the book for me, um, mostly just because I didn't enjoy the main character and it's kind of hard to love a book when you don't love the main character. So that is it for me today. Let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these books, if you are interested in reading them, if you have things you want to talk about because that's what we're here for. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. I will be doing videos every day from now until the 24th. So until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!